Hey everybody, my name's Ed. Okay, so more comics this week. So like always, I've got some new comics and I got some old comics. So we'll just um, we'll just jump into it. Um, I was gonna say I don't know too much about what's going on this week. Uh, I almost bought with this stack. I almost bought crossover number one, which I guess is kind of another sort of postmodern deconstruction thing. But I think I'll wait on a few reviews for that. And one comic that came out uh, this week that I totally forgot about was the, it's called, I guess, The Other History of the DC Universe, which I guess is a history of the DC Universe told through some of the uh, the black and minority characters. Uh, they started adding towards the 70s, and I think it's actually set in the 70s. I don't know. Kind of, a, ooh, excuse me, uh, kind of an interesting premise, maybe. Um, but I'll, I'll probably get that sometime in the future. But okay, so I'll show you what I got this week. Um, so Black Widow number one, or not number one, number three, Black Magic number 16, U.S. Agent, John Walker, U.S. Agent number one. <clears throat> I'm mostly bothered because I think this is a character that's really interesting and really underused. Um, I got it because it's this character and it's because it's Christopher Priest, and I think he can do some really interesting things with the character. He's kind of, uh, he's a Captain America spinoff, of course, and he's kind of usually presented as the more conservative version of, <laughs> of Captain America, but, uh, but like I said, Christopher Priest is, I think he's a, he's a smart writer and he's a clever writer. And I think he could probably uh, do some interesting things with this type of character, especially, uh, you know, especially what's going on these days. Okay. That Texas Blood, number one. That Texas Blood, number two. Number number three. Oh, can you see that? And then some of the older comics I got. <clears throat> Texas Blood is they're like issue five or something like that, right? Okay. Um Okay, so next thing you got here is the Kents. So last week I got issue four, I'm sorry, issue one through four. That was the first arc. And this is the next arc. The first arc was called Bleeding, Bleeding Kansas. And basically what the premise is, is the history of the Clark Kent family is uh, told as kind of a Western. And it kind of mixes in like historical drama, family drama, and things of that nature. The, the frame up is Pa Kent finds all these old letters and and old letters and old family heirlooms and things like that and he sends them to Clark Kent so part of the story <clears throat> is Pa Kent reading these things and part of the study story we're seeing it through the eyes of uh, of uh, of Clark reading again all these old letters but the letters are being told from the point of view of these various older characters set in the 19th century um, you know uh, I'm sorry. So it uh, it starts with you know with this guy. Uh, now I can't even remember the character's name. Jebediah and so on and so forth. But anyway, it starts uh, with the Western expansion and the whole conflict that was going on uh, with uh, the states expanding and do they ex expand uh, slavery and things of that nature. You know, one of the characters. Uh, was an abolitionist and it's really the story about that guy and then and it's really a story about his two sons uh, the one son who's on one side of uh, these sort of issues the other son ends up on the other side but it isn't just that it isn't just a lot of political stuff there's a lot of like family drama and whatnot and then they mix in like all these kind of historical figures you know uh, uh, what do you call it uh, now? Now I'm drawing a blank, <clears throat> but Harriet Tubman is in there. Uh, Douglas, uh, Senator Douglas, the guy who ran against Lincoln back in the day, is in it. 
uh, John Brown uh, is in it, and, and different characters and things of that nature. A couple of people I actually had to look up. Some people I already knew who they were, other people I had to kind of look up. So it's very, very interesting. So it's John Ostreiner, and it's also uh, Tim Truman. Tim Truman is doing the art. So really interesting, really cool. So this is issue five. Issue six, right? Issue seven. And then issue eight. Okay, just really good quality comics. And then here I've got Starstruck. All right, I actually had these back in the day, back in the late 80s. I had, this is like a six-issue miniseries. And I had all six issues at one point, but life happens and I don't have them anymore. So this is a, a I, let's see, I know they did like a graphic, no, uh, they did like a graphic novel. And then, then they did this series. And then I think the property bounced around to a couple other indie, indie um, comics companies. And it's kind of this, can't be it was based on i i think it might have been a play like this kind of campy sci-fi thing and there's a lot of wink wink nudge nudge sexuality and stuff like that going on and um <laughs> and i don't want to say i can't imagine it coming out today i definitely can imagine it coming out but if it came out from marvel you know <laughs> you know there'd be like 20 videos out the next day talking about how the pc people have gone out of control and whatnot, but um, but anyway, uh, here is oh man, this glare is a little bit too much. Uh, it's written by ba -ba 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 -ba, what's her name? Elaine. Wait, I'll go ahead and open this up. The artist by Mike Kaluga, so who was a big name fantasy artist during the seventies, and I think he also did. Elaine Lee, Elaine Lee and Mike uh, Kaluta. Some people say this is our most unusual publication. Well, sign it for yourself, but I've examined it carefully and everything looks perfectly normal to me. And this is supposed to be Archie Goodwin. But, uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good shot. But Mike Kaluta did a lot of fantasy art back in the day. And he also did, like, DC's version of The Shadow. So, oh, hey, here's a cool picture of the back cover. But, yeah, just a lot of uh, kind of fun, silly, campy, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. A little bit of gender bending going on or whatever. But, like I said, it's all in good fun. Here's number two. Now, here's the back cover here. And then here's number three. All right. Ah, and on the back, an ad for a moon shadow. Dude, can you see that? A fairy tale for grown-ups. This is the next thing I got to get. I actually also get to get those old copies of Coyote again. Oh, brother. All right, so I guess that's it. Uh, hopefully, well, <coughs> excuse me. I'm not going to have as much time as I thought I was going to have over this weekend. Uh, it's, a, it's a holiday weekend, but I do have to put in some hours. But I think I'll be able to catch up on some comics. And I'm, maybe I'll do like a trade review or something like that, maybe, hopefully. All right. So, um, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. You guys have a good day. Ah.